Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. I uh, want to record this video about how to freelance in Israel or just to give some general tips for specifically non-US citizens. Now, I say non-US citizens because firstly, I'm not a US citizen. I moved to Israel from Ireland. And secondly, more importantly, because of the fact that the US is unique, as far as I know, among world governments in that it extraterritorially uh, enforces taxation and the IRS. I don't understand it because I don't need to understand it. So just to put that disclaimer out of the way. Secondly, this is not intended as professional advice. I personally have always retained an accountant for freelancing. I highly recommend that uh, anybody does so, at least anyone making it their full-time income. Uh, these are just some general tips from one freelancer to another. I've been doing this for more than five years now. And just to give a general sketch, and I'm literally gonna do that, give a sketch of what the relationships are. So bear with me because this is gonna be pretty much off the cuff, at least in terms of the diagramming aspect, right? So this uh, stick represents you, Mr. or Mrs. Freelancer. Let's call this person Freelancer, okay? Now, when you open your file and begin your operations as a freelancer in Israel, you're going to um, need to interface with a few different parties, and I'm gonna just try to plot them out here. So the first one is going to be the tax authority. Now I'm gonna just depict the relationship between you and the tax authority here. Now, the relationship between you and the tax authority is going to depend, you're gonna to have to have one because you're going to need to report tax in Israel, irrespective of, so long as you're in the jurisdiction most of the time, and uh, there's a, a defined number of days that is, you're gonna have to report it irrespective of where it was sourced from. But um, how much income you make, your turnover is gonna determine whether you can use the business structure of uh, OSEC Patur or OSEC Moshe. Now I'm not gonna cover corporations or US entities because I'm again not familiar with them. So this video is just about those two. So via V, the tax authority, um, you're going to have potentially the reporting to MAM. You're actually gonna have that anyway, so I'm gonna just put this here. And I'm gonna just uh, detail the, the uh, information. So you're going to basically every two months, now I don't use bi-monthly because it's confusing. Some people say I think it means every two months or twice a month, I mean every two months. So six times per year report advances uh, which are called in Hebrew mot. so basically and this is how it's been working for me for the past five years um, you set a percentage of taxing at source with the tax authority and then six times per year you tell them how much you made in that two month period it's through a self-service online system so that's uh, number one now if you are an OSEC Pator with MAM you do have to fill out a yearly report. Uh, so that's option one. There's gonna be two pathways here. If you're an OSEC Pator, yearly, you're gonna have this yearly report uh, attesting that you are under the uh, VAT limit. Now the limit changes and I'm, it's the last time I kept an eye on it, it was about 100,000 shekels. I passed that threshold a couple of years ago. It's not anywhere near as big as it sounds, especially if it's your main income self-employment like it is mine. So you don't need to earn that much. It's only like 8,000 shekels a month to actually legally have to be an Osek Morche. Furthermore, certain professions in Israel have to be Osek Morche. I forget the ones um, that exact. I don't want to, again, I'm not an accountant, so I'm just gonna give a general sketch here, but certain professions, I think that architecture is one. Uh, there's a few other ones, okay? So if you're an Osek Patur, your relationship with tax authority, Mas Nasa specifically, the income, income, Mas Nasa, which sits within the tax authority. And MAM is just a department of the tax authority. So it's really part of the same entity here, just two different divisions, right? Every, everyone has to pay uh, income tax and only certain people have to submit six times a year VAT report. Now, if you go past the threshold, you're gonna be on, let's call it this uh, pathway B via V, the tax authority, right? We'll call this pathway B the second line here. 
and that's going to be you're also going to move six times per year you're going to be reporting uh sorry well reconciling ma'am so you're if you're an osek moshe six times per year you're going to do this to the masakmasa and six times per year you're also going to have to send in reports reconciliations of your ma'am now the reconciliation is going to be if you have israeli clients you're going to be collecting ma'am from them and if you have israeli suppliers you're going to be paying ma'am and there's rules regarding how much you can deduct from uh, each category of purchase okay so this is why you work with an accountant you can do your own ma'am reports if you have minimal israeli clients and minimal israeli expenses or you can pay a bookkeeper so there's a difference typically between a uh, the, what they call a us mats there's a us mats a bookkeeper or you can try to do it yourself various options so this is this is your relationship as a freelancer with the tax authority now the next entity you're going to be dealing with is betuach leomi social security so you're going to need to make payments to them as well now how do you set all this stuff up well there's different forms that you send firstly when i did the setup myself i don't recommend doing it because i paid an accountant who would have done it for me for no extra money so there is essentially no point in doing the self-service option uh, but basically you send a form to betuach leomi you register with masak nasa you register with mam and that's it i haven't yet cancelled anything because i've been freelancing have my teak open for the past five or six years but uh you just do the process in reverse you cancel with betuach leomi you cancel your file you close your file with uh with masak nasa etc okay so that's the second entity is betuach leomi i pay my betuach leomi by direct debit now the reason it's great to work with an accountant if we kind of imagine there being an accountant here well the accountant would be really in the diagram it would be freelancer and accountant the accountants like the intermediate okay so the accountant can deal with all these bodies instead of you having to deal with them directly your accountant can uh, deal with these matters uh, including actually with uh, betuach leomi so i'm going to just add the accountant to this diagram uh, because I think it's a good idea to use one right so you talk to your accountant and your accountant can make upgrades to how much you pay betuach leomi what your uh, deduction percentages are for mass um, but you would then uh, and paying ma'am if you want to do that but you also have a direct pathway to them if you want to do it yourself uh, and likewise you have a direct pathway if you want to do this yourself so there's this is becoming a little bit more complicated but at least i'm showing all the different things you can do right um final one we're almost there final body is your pension now regarding your pension it's become mandated that every atmai has to have i'm gonna actually go to full screen on my diagram here it's become mandated for many years that every freelancer in Israel has to have a pension, so it's no longer an option. So again, we have two distinct ways to do this. Option A is to hire a pension agent. So I'm going to actually going to go full out on this diagramming here. Um, and I'm going to give a yellow fill to accountant and a yellow fill to pension agent because these are the these are the kind of intermediaries, right? As a freelancer, let's put you, let's put us as green or well orange. So a pension agent is another optional. So what's yellow is optional. You can technically work without an accountant and deal with tax, ma'am, and betoklemi yourself as well as pension. Or you can uh, do this via a pension agent. A pension agent can invest for you in these different uh, in these different funds. Or there's a couple of options that you can use directly as a freelancer. One of them is called Metav Dash, and there is another one whose name evades me. But these are pension plans that you, as a freelancer, if I can get one more arrow out of the sky, I will. There we go. I just need to bring it in a little bit. I'll just move it here there we go so you can contribute directly to metav dash or you can go through a pension agent who can put you into different pensions and i believe they also can manage your uh, metav dash so it can also go 
uh, like this. There we go. So I think that's pretty much the entire freelance ecosystem in Israel plotted. It's not as complicated as it looks. Let's just go over it. You are the freelancer. You can choose to retain an accountant. It's highly recommended. The, the bodies you will have relationships with are, and I'm gonna give these a this, this color coding, the tax authority, the Mass Haknasa department, who you will uh, coordinate with them how much uh, you're gonna make, and your accountant can do this on your behalf, which is super useful, how much you expect to make and what your tax at source percentage will be. You're gonna be sending into Mass Haknasa six reports per year, Zmik um, If you go through the threshold or you're a certain type of business, you've no choice but to be an OSEC Moshe. Then you need to liaise with the MAM, the tax authority, six reports per year. And if you're going through the mass, the OSEC Batur pathway, you just do an annual report. But Tuach Leomi is your social security. I'm gonna give them the red shade as well. I'm gonna save this on my uh, computer uh, as I've gone to all the trouble of making it. And um, you need to, um, pay them a amount and there's going to be annual reconciliations for Betuach Lomi and for Masak Masa. So you can, based on what you earn, you should be setting aside an amount for both of these institutions and you'll do your annual report yearly and you'll find that you owe or, or, or are owed by the tax authority and Betuach Lomi and there's interest either way. So that's important. So that's another reason I'm, I'm now hiring, going to be hiring a bookkeeper because now that I've been doing it for a while, I want someone to say, okay, you need to set aside 1,200 shekels this month for Betuach uh, Leomi, let's pay them that much. And we, you need to set aside this much for uh, the tax authority. So you don't end up with any nasty surprises. Finally, they'll also, an accountant will be able, also able to tell you uh, your pension contributions. You can hire a pension agent who will be able to put you into different pension plans, or there's also a direct service account and I'm gonna put the pension in the same shade actually because nowadays it's not a statutory body, rather it's a group of pension funds, but it is now mandatory that you should uh, contribute to them. But you can choose to retain a pension agent or go directly and there's one, uh, one of those options is made of dash, there might be other ones. I hope this little uh, schematic here has been useful, this explanation. Um, it does take a while to get used to all the different forms and reporting procedures, but um, it's not insurmountable bureaucracy and if you do have an accountant as your central point of contact for managing relationships with all these authorities, it definitely makes life so much easier. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to get more videos from me, feel free, feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel.